Today we're going to build this brick chicken coop. This house you see right here is about to be torn down. So somebody wanted to get the bees out first. That's a new roof, and I believe that's also a new air conditioner condenser. Pepper, why are you hiding? Saw me turn the hose on? Come on, gotta get bathed. Well, the guy who owns this property said we're welcome to come and look through the rubble while they're not working on it and see if we find anything we can use. Stuck right in the house there. Look at that hardwood floor that's just going to waste. Oh, it's just sickening. Look at that rim joist, doubled rim joist, no rot. That's sturdy stuff. It doesn't even look bad. All this stuff just going to the dump. It's a brand new door. The last owner just put it on it. Gold Bond. Isn't that like some sort of medicated itch cream? Look at this copper drain pipe. Sweated copper. All the way up to the vent. Ooh, nice little French door. Oh yeah, real wood. It was probably straight fur at one time. Our bathtub's nicer than ours. But this hardwood floor just drives me crazy. Look at that. I mean, there's no water stains or anything. Pretty substantial one by shelving. More louver doors. Those are pretty nice. 
I like louver doors. Kind of beachy. Look at that rafter. Thing is straight. All right, so the demo guy said while they're gone, we can feel free to scavenge. I would like to collect some bricks. They don't match our house, but we might be able to build like a chicken coop or something with them. We need a bigger chicken coop because we got some more chickens. And uh, actually we could probably find anything we need to build the whole coop here. Obviously there's a whole house, so it'd be nice if we could get some, some wood, even some of those new shingles, but you know, I only have like a couple hours to do this, so I doubt I'm going to get all that. But bricks would be nice. That looks sufficient for a first load. for you guys girls excuse me because you don't want to share your house do you fifty trips later came out the hole right there. Wow, doesn't that just make you sick? House, all the lumber, all the hardwood, everything in it just being piled up and taken to the landfill. You see the hardwood floor out of one of the rooms still stuck to a big sheet of plywood. Ah, oh, look at all that lumber, man. I mean, the floor joists alone, oh man. And the ceiling joists and rafters, really long, really straight stock. And if anybody's wondering, somebody paid $370,000 for this house and then supposedly is spending $150,000 just regrading the lot and removing all this stuff. Is that like 
got your nesting boxes here. You only have to take one step in. So all of this fits. Can you imagine that? That's fine. Yeah, that's what we need. I think we've got this laid out like we'd like it. We went ahead and laid them out dry with everything lined up, all those holes lined up. This is to get the exact size it'll be without having to fiddle with the bricks too much. And so these corners here, this is obviously where the door will be. And these stand for half bricks, so this will actually be cut in half. It'll look more like that and it'll be all the way up. Same on this side, so it'll be a nice solid door jam. So now what we need to do is measure all this and then we'll know exactly how big to make a concrete footing in there. But first we gotta move the old chicken coop. Biscuit. Eighty-three and a half by forty-six and a half. Eighty-three and a half by forty-six and a half. Whoa, whoa. All right, so that's roughly it, right there. Dogs just bark and bark and bark. So here are the four corners roughly. I'm going to make sure everything's in sort of a 90 degree format. So the footing is going to be about a foot wide, roughly. So it's wider than the brick, of course. And I'll make it a little wider and a little deeper all the way around so that we can actually fudge with the bricks a little if we need to so there will actually be footing showing on both sides of the brick and there's even going to be footing underneath where the door is over here as well that way it'll make everything a little bit neater and it'll make it harder for things to crawl under the door get under the door or dig under the door let's mark it out and go get some concrete but i'm going to try and level this first So I'm not going to dig down for the footing. What I think I'm going to do is just build a frame and then I'm just going to lay the concrete in the frame right on top of it so it'll just conform to the ground. guy was just unloading those these over there and he had about this many left and I said looks like exactly what I need so he didn't have to unload the rest and I didn't have to load any I will tell you though I prefer the 60 pound bags and not these 80 pounds I'm getting kind of old
and that always parked right next to a cart corral. So this dirt's pretty well compacted. It's mostly red clay. I don't see really any topsoil. Now I'm not recommending you do it this way, but I think it's gonna be sufficient for what we're doing here. I'm gonna make some forms out of what scrap we gathered from the rafters from the house they just tore down that we'll eventually use as rafters too. So we're gonna we're gonna use the rafters as concrete forms. Oh, and if you're wondering what the house looks like two weeks later that they tore down, there's already a big new concrete block foundation So the form is level right now, believe it or not, that's an optical illusion if it looks like on camera what it looks like to me. But obviously you can see it leaves a huge gap on the downside over there, which concrete will just pour out if we don't backfill with something around there. So I gotta find some place to get backfill. Okay, I thought about it. I've got some clear poly and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna line the inside of this with clear poly and it's gonna work sort of like one of those cheap above ground pools where when it fills up with concrete it'll just trap it like a pool i don't know how that's going to work with the inside because i still have to do the inside form but um we'll see but first i guess i need to check this thing for square i'm probably going to have to check it for square several times before we're done but i'm going to have to get some stakes to hold it still while i square it up Aha, uh -huh. my dad had some leftover rebar cutoffs from when we built the garage. All right, girls, it's time for me to get back to work. Now let's get the measurements of the inside. 34 inches. So now we have to subtract three inches from both of those for the thickness of the forms. Since we're working with two by stock, which is one and a half inches thick, so that would be three inches for both ends each way. Alright, I calculated that wrong. Obviously, I only had to take three inches off of one section of sides. This is inside anyway. Otherwise, it would be like this. So, anyway, you don't have to take three inches off both sides. Just two parallel sides. Now 
got to get the inside form level with the outside form. Well, apparently I've done several of these videos where I'm trying to explain something while it's in time-lapse. So, you've missed half of the lousy instructional here. Anyways, um, so there's going to be a door around here somewhere where people are going to step in and out. So I need to soften up the edges with this edging tool, which you can see. It's flared on each side and you basically just run it back and forth and it makes a nice smooth rounded edge on the concrete kind of like what you see on a city sidewalk in fact it's exactly what you see on a city sidewalk now with the plastic being as it is especially in the corners how it's all wrinkled is not going to be that smooth but maybe when we get the forms off we can touch it up with a little stuccoing or something Definitely been over here. We'll just start with the easy part here on the outside. These are cabinet screws, by the way. I just happen to have them on hand. And they have this long, smooth part on the shank, which helps draw stuff together. If it's threaded all the way to the top, you have to kind of pre drill, back it out, and then drill again to get everything nice and tight. These are very tiny torques. I can't even read what this says. They're definitely not T25s. Not too bad. There's some places, of course, where the wrinkles are entrapped. I 
and if you notice my footwear I'm a big advocate of be as safe as you like don't necessarily do what I'm doing but if you want to wear flip-flops or sandals do it just be careful Pick an old blade I'm just going to take this utility knife and cut away the plastic. So this is what it looks like after it's dried for a few days. Alright, so I'm going to try to mark out my corner bricks. 